Thanks for rolling up. Tubla Marley, certified pothead. Finishing one of my uh, Night Taj Bliss and shit. You already wrote this uh, White Peach. White Peach, White Owl and shit. Um, yo. Real fast as shit, yo. Um, the channel channel recently got monetized, so you know what I'm saying we uh we got the join the join button and shit. You know what I mean? Uh, joining joining the channel, you get extra perks and shit. You know what I'm saying? Just by uh, just by joining and shit. Um, and 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 uh, we're coming up with ways to uh make those perks more and more. You know what I mean? Meaningful and shit. It's uh. Stop with the bullshit, bro. Jump in, my dude. Oh, yeah, let's do that. It's an iconic Oklahoma landmark the VW Spider Bug in Lexington. Drive down. What the fuck is that at? Hold on, that ain't a spider, bro. This shit only got six legs. Yeah, spider, spiders have eight legs. That's not, that's not, that's not, that's not a spider. The VW Spiderbug in Lexington. Drive down Route 77 and you can't miss it. Built in the early 1970s, it has always been surrounded by two things woven into the fabric of rural Oklahoma, farms and churches. But in a sign of the times, perhaps a part of a new Oklahoma, its once holy neighbor is now a medical marijuana grow operation. So this is our original. All right, so, so, okay. We we uh we've been following what Oklahoma's doing for for a little bit. Oklahoma's doing big things when it comes when it comes to weed. Um, one the entry the entry to get into the weed market in uh Oklahoma is fairly low. Uh, you know what I mean what was it twenty five twenty five hundred to get the license? Do you know what I mean produce? They say, they said in Oklahoma, if you uh, if you if you doing if you if you um doing doing un black market weed in Oklahoma, you can get you can you can get that shit grown for as little as a hundred dollars a pound, which would make now nah, I mean uh, your profit margin. Crazy. Original room. So this is where we started. Josh and Don Blevins own Twisted Rue, one of nearly eight thousand licensed marijuana grow operations in Oklahoma. Right, bro. Eight thousand of them shits. I mean, just in Oklahoma. That's the most in the country. We originally were looking at Colorado, but when Oklahoma went legal, we pretty much uprooted all of our kids and moved to Oklahoma to kind of start over. It's a that's crazy, bro. You know what? Cause I was just looking at some shit. Um, I was just looking at some shit, and they were saying that uh, you can't just move to Oklahoma and start and start and start operation no more. You gotta uh, you gotta uh have roots in Oklahoma. So I don't know how my man did it, but um, yeah, he did that shit story you'll hear from many chasing a dream and a profit here in the sooner state it'll cost you that why um this b row they getting looks so fake like 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 move to oklahoma to kind of start over it's a story you'll hear I from many think, all right this is what i mean when i say this b row like 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 I don't think she needs to be here looking at this plant like that. That shit just looks out of place. Like you was better off just not me filming in the plant. By Facing itself. a dream and a profit here in the Sooner State. You ain't even doing nothing. You're not even doing nothing at all. State, it'll cost you thousands of dollars less to get started here. 
initial business license, property, I mean, everything. It's those low barriers of entry that came together to form a green wave once medical marijuana became legal here in 2018. But was rural Oklahoma ready to ride it? This legalized and the next thing you know, you wake up and they're popping up like popcorn. Sheldon Tatum is the rural water manager in Hughes County, Oklahoma. Population just over 13,000. Tatum says there are about eight large grow operations in his territory that can each average up to a quarter of a million gallons of water usage a month. And while many use wells on their property, he worries his 560 residential customers could end up shouldering the cost of the overall increased demand. Just to drill a new well now for us, you're probably looking at uh, close to three quarters of a million dollars. Another issue Tatum. Okay. So, so, so the idea of this story is the impact uh, that the weed is having on rural Oklahoma. And so far, the only the only thing that this nigga is saying is that you know what I mean the cost of water might go up. And then, like, all right, let's do this. If these facilities, the eight facilities in my man's area, is just using all the water, why the fuck would the niggas in town have to pay more? Just charge them niggas more. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Says is aging infrastructure. It takes often a couple of years for us to even put the wheels in motion for funding to upgrade pumps or anything of that nature. But these delicate plants don't just need water to stay alive. They need light. We spent a ton of money up front to run LED light fixtures air conditioning and the right amount of humidity, all things that require a large amount of electricity. Our monthly bills in the summer are about five to six grand. And that may sound like a lot, but what effect does a high energy user like a grow have on everyone else's electricity? The answer may surprise you. In it's going to surprise me if you tell me that, that you don't know I mean um, a, a, a business next door to me using more energy is going to fuck with my energy. Like, unless they tapping into my energy and using my electric. I don't know why the, uh, why the, uh, Price, price would change. General, these growers are very good for the grid. Generators, Logan Pleasant like, is the director of engineering and operations at the Lake Region Electric Cooperative, serving parts of seven Oklahoma counties. He says grows are beneficial because they don't fluctuate as often as, say, an electric car charger. They are consistent and reliable. And then when they do come on, they tend to come on and stay on. And that type of load is is the holy grail of load for the grid with around um, 200 gr okay 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 so where i thought they were saying that the uh issue was going to be the price going up that's not the issue the issue is these niggas using so much power that it drains the power uh grid to where you know what i mean it may fuck around and make the power grid fail i don't understand i don't I don't I don't know of a grow that could use that much electric that would shut down a power grid. I imagine you need a bunch of energy to do that. Grows in his jurisdiction. So far, he says things have been running pretty smoothly. They've been allowed to attach to the power grid with no major disruptions. But if their load continues to grow and system upgrades are required, then at that point, we'll go to them and, and ask for monetary input for those investments. And that's a scenario already playing out over in Lexington at Twisted Rue. We're in a position on a new uh, building that we built that we're having to wait till August to get really any kind of power out there because they have to update their substation. In the meantime, Josh and Don are doing what they can to be good stewards of the environment. This industry creates so much trash. In a market that has become increasingly saturated, the Blevins say the industry here in Oklahoma is at a turning point. I think there was definitely 
a point where you needed to recognize that that market was going to happen and the saturation was going to happen to, to make decisions and changes in your the way you're doing business to sustain. For them, sustaining business has meant looking to be more environmentally friendly. We've been working with solar panel companies to try to figure out a way to utilize that type of energy. But the upfront cost is expensive, and with so much competition, prices are going down, which means so are profits. And the market. All right. Um, so again, the story was was based. The basis of the story is medical marijuana industry creates a booming impact on rural Oklahoma. I thought originally it was going to be talking about how much money rural Oklahoma is is bringing in. It's not. It's called. It's talking about all the detrimental uh, shit that that weed is doing to rural Oklahoma. The uh, two the two uh, examples they gave us was that the water. Now I mean the usage of water from these uh, big cannabis growth facilities is 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 is, is now I mean may may may. They didn't really say dry up, dry up, dry up the underground water. But it's kind of like what they was lobbied alluded to where they said it takes that be three times as much to drill a well now because you got to access that underground water. And the reason why it's going up is because, you know, what I mean, that that water is more expensive or some shit like that. I don't, I don't know exactly. Shit makes no sense to me. Then they say these big ass growth facilities is gonna shut down the power grid. I just can't see that happening, bro. I just, I just, I just can't see that happening myself. It does drop down like this. People tend to forget about that issue, and what issue, or what can they just utilize for the time being? All right. So, so what he was just now talking about was the, the fact that the, that there's so many people. Growing and selling weed in Oklahoma, that the price of weed in Oklahoma is dropping. So you know what I'm saying these niggas' profits is is smaller. So all the shit he's trying to do as far as solar panels, and all that shit is costing them an arm and a leg. Man, bro, look. That's what I'm gonna say, bro. They knew when they um. Well, if they didn't know when they uh said yes to medical marijuana and allowing everybody in their mind to be able to grow, that uh, yeah, you know I mean it w it would affect. How much water in the state is used? How much electricity in the state is used? Then they just say they just had poor planning. Poor planning, bro. Um, they're not gonna be able to like stop what's already happening. Like they're not gonna be able to shut down the weed and shit. So I don't know what they're gonna do. I have no idea what they're gonna do. Yeah, bro. Um, I mean, I mean. <laughs> You can you can you can charge these dispense these these grow facilities more for the water they use and the electricity they use. Besides that, bro, eh, y'all y'all can y'all just gonna have to be complaining. 